What I do to the women, bro. And we're live. <laughs> What's up? What's Welcome up? back to what? Episode nine. Episode nine, season episode two. Nine. Welcome back, Luke. Yeah, I was in the air flying last two, the last episode, so I could not make it. So, yeah, y'all got it handled. We got it handled. We we made it, but we were depressed the whole time. I'm sure. Absence. I'm sure. Everyone was commenting how sad they were that you weren't here. I doubt that. So, um, yeah, I don't uh, think Southwest would have liked me doing a live gun feed from there. <laughs> 10,000 feet. in the middle yet. seat there complaining the whole right? time. You can't of, set up I, that wall. That wall behind you, they wouldn't go for that on the plane. <laughs> I was just editing gun videos, so that was interesting. But no, I probably freaked out some people. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. It's all good. So <laughs> I, I always wonder that, too, because I've done a lot of work on the plane when yeah. I hook up to the Wi-Fi and you, you see people looking mm -hmm. and you're like, just yeah, and I'm like everything. looking at the same gun stuff over and over and over. Cause I'm editing back and forth. Some Karen will complain about you. Next thing you know, they'll be uh, making an early landing somewhere. Yeah. Just they'll, they'll, they'll so you'll be duct taped to your seat. Right. So Sal is a, is a staple now here. Welcome again, Sal. Good to be back. And Dan, you're you're getting there. I'm an honorary one. Right. Yeah, yeah. Dan, we're both gonna be like Steve Martin on Saturday Night Live, right? Mm -hmm. Isn't he like officially the 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 number one like co host ever? He's been on there the most times. So yeah. me we're, and Dan we're, are competing. We're the we're the wild mm -hmm. and crazy fill ins. Mm -hmm. If you guys if you guys are competing, we're gonna have to kick Sal off of some and Dan, you'll have to come on for <laughs> Sal, you're banned for the next three months. Yeah, that's all right. That's... Well, he's listed as a host on the website, the, the new CC. Oh, there you go. See, oh, so uh, you yeah, can't just get rid of me that easy, I guess. Exactly. Yeah, it's official. So uh, I think we had enough time to let some people get in. We have, um, we're going to do story time tonight or whatever, whatever we're calling it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not bedtime story, so I guess it could be if you want to, but whatever. It, it well, 2021 happen. is not disappointing. So every yeah, time yeah. we decide to do the topic show, there's just more and more bizarre stuff each time. Yeah, yeah. And we we try to we try to keep it. Uh, I don't like doing the same stuff over and over again because these get um, very repetitive with the, especially with like the home invasion ones and the right. you know the car break-ins and and stuff. Pizza the, the delivery first. guys shooting people. That's a <laughs> constant theme. Hasn't there been like four of those in one week? Now? There there have been a lot this year. Yeah. yeah. So there's some different stuff there. this past two weeks. Though. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I, I'm talking about car, car thefts and stuff. And that's actually the first one. That, <laughs> there, was some peeping about, Tom, but... there was like a couple, two or three peeping Tom stories and stuff. Yeah. So. And I, and I didn't, I didn't talk to you about those because I thought that I thought that we had covered them on like one or two episodes oh. ago, but maybe we didn't. Okay. Maybe, but we we can we, we can throw them up tonight if you want. If we get um, to it towards the end, or we can add, the, yeah. the, particularly the one where they like the, the husband and wife like chase the guy down and then she got the gun taken from. Anyway, we can get to that. Yeah, to it. yeah, yeah. Amen to that comment. Then we <laughs> we like those those stories better for sure. So Facebook is uh, feeding this to more people tonight than they have been in the past. So hopefully that's a good sign. Yeah, let's see. It's since Zuckerberg went to the shooting oh, range, yeah. man. He, he got he's the just, gun range. Yeah, he's just gonna, you know, I didn't see that. The Iron Curtain. He went to the gun yeah. range. Yeah, oh, but he yeah, threw a spear. Was... I saw the spear stuff. Is that what he you're talking about? The gun range. Oh, I thought it was he, like he his backyard. The gun range. So okay. He had uh, he put a video up where he was shooting a bow and arrow, and he was wearing ear protection, and people were busting on him. They're like, "Dude, what what are you doing?" <laughs> and he commented, and he's like, "Oh, that wasn't for the bow and arrow. It was for the guy behind me shooting handgun." Oh, okay. 
So, so it's just that freedom through osmosis just while he was there. Just some of it rubbed off, maybe. We're hoping. Yeah. <laughs> maybe. He's like, give me, give these guys a little more reach just for a little bit. Let's, let's right. see. Yeah, that's, don't worry. There will, there will be an intervention. Okay, Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos, we are going to swoop right in and <laughs> and talk to that guy. So All gonna, the Bond villains. Yeah. yeah. George Soros, the whole group. Yeah. So let's uh, let's get into this. Get right first into one it. Here. Yeah, we're gonna try to get through. We've been doing pretty good, Sal. Right? Last last week was um, pretty decent, right? For get, getting through the what was. Oh like, yeah, six, yeah. I, I think we've uh, yeah gotten the timing a bit better. So uh, I don't think we're being overly ambitious. I think we can tackle these tonight. Yeah. Yeah, maybe maybe throw one of those other ones in, Luke. So if you want to just um, throw the link in the private chat and I can okay. load it up. So first one, actually, these first two um, were from uh, from from John over at Active Self Protection on his channel. He finds all this good stuff. Um, this one not so good for well, we'll talk about it, but. Um, so this screenshot here, this is at a car dealership, and there's a dude in this car right here who's trying to steal it, who does successfully, at least for a little bit. And uh, so we're going to play through this. This was in, uh, I don't know where this was. <laughs> it, was it was in the U.S. So we're going to start this here, though. This car right here, uh, I believe, was stolen. So the guy's going to get out of here. You see the hood kind of yeah. flopped up on the, on the windshield here. Yeah, so he he needed a, he needed a new vehicle. I saw a car driving the opposite way maybe the other day like that with the hood open. I'm like, what the really? fuck is going on? It wasn't, it wasn't this guy, was it? I don't know. Hope not. <laughs> maybe this anyway, was a movie. Random comment. Sorry. Yeah. So just gonna start playing this. No no audio. There is audio, but we're just gonna keep it muted. So he's running up to the car dealership. No better place to find a car. And so I didn't notice that a, before. He had a tire iron in his hand. Yes. Um, yeah, I know, like, something. the guy that shoots said he thought it was a rifle. Um, yeah. That. So, so there's a test driver in this car, 67 years old. He rips out. And this guy here is the employee. And then out the door comes an armed employee. Tries to get the guy out, and he fires a shot at him. <laughs> <laughs> we well, grabbing the so, car while it's driving off. Like, all right. That, I wouldn't. That's not... Yeah, hold on, let me let me just play that one more time. It happened really quick. Now that people get the gist of it, so he comes out, goes for that car with the people in it, and then pay attention to the left. You're going to see the armed employee come out and just it pay attention. To what he's doing. Looks like old people. Yeah, I think the guy the guy in the driver's seat was like seventy something. I think. Yeah. Yeah. And and interestingly, we will we'll get into this, but um, the the bad guy already pulled this dude out, right? And he, I, I just I, I like to watch each person in the video to see what they're doing. He's just hands in his pockets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, it's just it's really it's really interesting to me. You see him pull out, and he's like, "Oh my gosh, what's going on?" And then and the just wife is just around, standing there, and then he just stands there, doesn't go inside. And and just watches. It's really interesting how how people react to things. All right. Yeah, you think you'd want to get away from there, or just like just go inside, or I don't know what's down south of there, but just get. I'm not going to put my hands in my pocket to watch what the hell goes on. Obviously, right. And on and on top of that, the uh, this armed employee. So the car. He, this this dude's gone, right? right. But there he goes chasing after him running after the the car so that's another point with the with the older gentleman here standing there with his hands in his pockets that's one reaction and then you have this armed employee who decides to chase after the guy so, i mean <laughs> that, good thing he was armed and like he was able to carry at work so that's good obviously because some people can't carry at work but and i think he he won't be charged so he was justified in taking a shot apparently but should he have is how, how John yeah, put it. In, exactly. In and article. two things I'll throw out. I didn't watch John's commentary. He always hits on a bunch of good points. But two right. things I'll throw out is if you're going to do something like this, first of all, we're getting back into the same theme we've discussed in almost every one of these shows we've done. We discussed it two weeks ago. 
uh, getting into gunfights over property, the issues that opens you up to, obviously, not just your own personal safety, now the liability and ruining your life because of lawsuits and mm -hmm. spending time in court, the whole deal. But beyond yeah. that, I want people watching this to consider two things. First of all, what if he had shot that guy and killed him and the guy's foot stayed on the gas? He rolled out into that highway and killed a family. Okay, because the vehicle kept moving. Second well, thing I want people to understand is you start shooting at a moving vehicle and hitting innocent bystanders becomes very possible. There's a lot of police districts in this country that absolutely forbid shooting fleeing suspects in vehicles unless that suspect is actively trying to run people over or kill people. Okay. Yeah. So these are things you have to consider w w acting rashly like this, I think is another manifestation of people carrying guns who do not understand the legalities of their actions, which yeah. is a constant theme, unfortunately. And, and, and watch, watch the guy as he was pointing a gun before the guy pulled off. Grandma Martha over here is directly across. Yeah, in the line of fire, standing there. Yeah, there. John mentioned that too. Like, uh, yeah, you know, he's pointing right. Yeah, he's, you guys he's in his back spot. Yeah, I'm trying to guys, figure out pay, where this was. Pay okay. pay attention. I just noticed something. Once it gets right to this this shot here, look, watch the whole video. You you guys see anything that we didn't catch before? No, go ahead. Let's well, see when he breaks some, breaks some glass. It already happened. Did you see it? No. When oh, the police the car drove the by? The cops rolled by, oh, yeah. right? I saw it before. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, yeah, somebody mentioned yeah, right that in the there. comments. Yeah, pretty sure that's a, a police officer. Oh, that's a black and white. I mean, I mean, this this picture right here, you know, you have a threat right here, and let's say you're right here, you know, and the officer is right here, you're still needing to handle business yourself yeah you're on your own how would that officer you know? going 70 miles an hour past the store have any clue what's happening here right yeah. right somebody mentioned it was not in the u.s but it looks like it was in lake county ohio somewhere so it was it was, it was in the u.s yeah. yeah it was yeah i'm just not sure of the location well now you are where where, where was it lake county ohio oh i see i see here now okay so. That's up near Cleveland. Yeah. Oh, Ohio has been a competitor against Florida lately for all the weird stuff. It really has. <laughs> yeah, that's Ohio, where the guy, man. that's where the guy shot himself in the face in the gun range. Oh, really? That was Ohio too? That yeah. was also Lake County, I believe. Wait, what happened? Oh, that was that. We did that last time. A guy oh. uh, was shooting in an indoor range, got some hot brass in his shirt, started flailing around, oh, yeah, shot God. himself in the face. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that. All right. Went through, went in, in one cheek out the other. Talk about lucky. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. So um, we're, we're going to move on, but the consensus here on the, um, on the, the armed employees uh, reaction to this, um, pretty safe to say is don't chase after a fleeing suspect. Uh, for property. Right now, what right. if there was a couple of children in the back of the car? Be different, right? But there right. was not. So again, right. we come back to that issue. Good you are point. now starting a gunfight over property. Over yeah. whose property? The the dealership. The dealership, like whatever. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. well, regardless, I know, but yeah, property yeah, yeah, yeah. or not, right? The principal stands. Either way, it's insured. Right. 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 Uh, right. A hundred percent insured. <laughs> All right. So. Yeah, th this whole episode was going to be about um, defense against property, and okay. but it, it turned out not to be that. But it's just it's such a huge topic, and it's so it blows my mind that there are so many people out there who are so adamant about, well, that's mine, and I'm going to do what I can to, to, you know, make sure it's not stolen or or whatever. And these people have they have families, they have, you know all of this stuff that is so much more important than a car getting stolen. And if they do shoot back, what do you do then? You know, what if, what if you're killed doing something like that? Is it worth it? Yeah. You got, you still have the car, but now you're dead. And. You right. Know. So this one, um, where do we say this was Guatemala, right? Yes. Okay. So uh, John called said diplomat. I'm not quite sure, but in this vehicle here, 
is a quote unquote diplomat, someone who had uh, a number of armed security personnel in the vehicle with them. And then we're going to play the video in a second here. And there are going to be three people who come up at least, uh, I think at least two of them with guns. And we'll see how this plays out. So they're going to come from the bottom of the screen here. There's going to be two at first, and then the third one is going to pop up, I believe. So they go right up to the car, gun in the driver's face, and then shots go Ooh. off. Two shots, I think. Yeah, two or three, and that and that guy's down for the count. And then you have one of the armed security comes out, trying to get a handle on the situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was shot, spinal shot or something, because... As John put it, he was doing concrete angels with <laughs> right, uh, right. moving his legs. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you see the, the, the all the rest of his body is is moving around here. That's just his torso moving back and forth, but the legs aren't moving, so I don't think uh, I don't think he's doing anything. But um, So most of us are not diplomats with security forces rolling around with us. <laughs> right. But, right. Well like, lock so, your doors, obviously like that's easy. Right. Well, so w one, one of the points that I love to make, and I think about every time when I'm driving, is the space, mm -hmm. especially when you're stopping. So there are, there are probably at a light here, I believe. I see a crosswalk here. Uh, the space between your vehicle and the vehicle in front of you. And if you have, you know, w what's the clear path out? Do you have one? Like they have a pretty clear, you know, they can just go this way um, if the guy stepped on it and paid attention to his driving. But um and yeah, I, I'll, 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 what's that i was just gonna say i heard something off it was a while ago but it was one of greg greg's vada videos and they yep. were doing some vehicle stuff and it basically it was just a little tip like if you can't see the car's tires that are ahead of you you're too close to it yep yep Back tires. Yep. so like yep. i that, yep. i don't know why that stuck with me so i just don't go that far so you always have an out yeah yeah S simple little tip yeah mm -hmm. and then the, the second thing I want to mention, and you guys can, can say whatever you want about this, but um, how quickly uh, these two guys come up to the car. Let's say you're driving that car and you're carrying your gun. What's the reaction time that you're going to have with something like that? Or are you even going to shoot? Or are you going to step on the gas and try to get out of there? So, again, if, if the vehicle can move... Mm -hmm. That yeah. would be my go-to, right? Absolutely. So obviously, I, I, it's not in park. You're mm -hmm. sitting at a red light. It should still be in drive, so you should just be able to hit the gas and turn. Or boxed yeah. into the point where you can't move. Right, right. You know, I mean, again, you, you always think in terms of, you know, you're driving a 4,000-pound missile, right, rather than a 124-grain <laughs> uh, missile that you can launch at the guy, right? If you can use the, the vehicle, that's what you want to do. But what interests me about this is, you know, these guys, it seems like just a random carjacking attempt, and they pick the worst possible car probably <laughs> in the whole city, if not the whole country, right. they could pick. It would be what uh, I, I think, yeah, it's um, – well-known trainer and writer Masada Ayub, he he calls that uh, I think he calls it something like a, a, an acute failure of the victim selection process when <laughs> criminals do something that that's so ridiculous, you know, and they they just choose the the most mind-blowing, you know, option. How how could they possibly make this mistake? Of course, in this case, right. it looks like just a regular car, you know, so maybe it's more understandable. Yeah. But this. Saying I'm sorry, I keep going. Keep going. No, no, that was it. Uh, it just, you know, he he picked the worst possible car <laughs> he could have picked in the whole city. Right, Brandon, can you? The window's not down, is it? Uh, so I don't believe so. Um, if we go back here, I, I don't think it was. I think you can I see. Think it, I yeah, think it shoots through the window. Yeah. Okay, and, and I, there's nothing from any of the news things that say it's an Auburn car either. I'm just reading the comments. Somebody said the wind was, no. window was down and it's an armored yeah. car. It, it, it's a Honda element. I don't think if I, you're going to armor up a car, it's probably not going to be an element. <laughs> right. I mean, probably, probably a Tahoe. Or, it, it's or, understandable yeah. that they would not have thought that this is a vehicle transporting, right? Uh, some kind of executive. Right. Right. Also. Right. 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 And, I, and I can't tell if the, the shots that come from the car are coming from the driver. Or I think they came from the driver. Yeah. 
I think he draws one Boom. shot. They oh, run yeah, the second yeah. shot. He hits him in the spine, I think. I see it right That's there. What it I saw, like I saw I it earlier. Boom, bam. Four shots. Yep. And and what what about this? Let's say you're driving and then you come up on this. This this silver car right here. He he's about to get out. He opens the door and he's like, Oh, that guy need help? <laughs> yeah. Look, see? But he doesn't yeah, get nope. out. Because the guy still got a, has a gun. She comes over and, or, I don't know what right. she was. And I was curious, what's before. this chick yelling at? I don't know. <laughs> no I got to get to work. Can you get him out the street? Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. So, you know, one thing, though, looking at this, this is another example, though, of very effective self-defense through the glass of your own vehicle. Right. You know, um, I think back to the thing of last summer, I was it in Austin? It was somewhere in or Dallas in Texas. Oh, the the right. guy on the streets, the one activist holding an AK-47, and the guy in the car burned him down because supposedly he pointed the rifle at the car. Whether that's the case yes. or not, you know, it was deemed justified. But you know, we, you, you know, it, we feel like we're trapped in a box, and you are vulnerable in a vehicle. But also, if you have the element of surprise, that guy approaching your vehicle doesn't know you're armed. You're at a tremendous advantage. That was here in Austin, and the guy was, was not charged yep. until a couple of weeks ago when a new Soros backed attor- attor- uh, prosecuting attorney took office and is Naturally, now charging, yeah. charging him. Wow. Did you guys notice that guy got a little air here? He like, did. I was just <laughs> texting you. I'm like, that's the perfect spot to stop the video. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So. Yeah, and, th- and this guy's like, nope, don't want anything. And I actually, I didn't notice uh, the third guy that went up. See, you just see him sneak up the back there. Oh, he t- he did. He took off quick. Okay, mm-hmm. I saw him that time. It's, it's funny how quickly they uh, run in the opposite like the direction. The motorcycle guy just like rolls through. Yeah. No, the motorcycle guy's like, work. nope, I don't want any of this. <laughs> <laughs> right. But he but he does stop at the light. So <laughs> oh, just let the guy That's walk across. Right. All right. Yep. So, uh, all right. Any anything else? Can we move on to number three? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think we covered that one. Yeah. So this is another uh, possessions video slash story. And man, this one uh, these, these kind of make me cringe. So let me let me bring the video up here. So basically, this guy's the homeowner. And at the beginning of the video, we're going to see this door open just like it is. And there's going to be someone rummaging through. And according to the homeowner, there were two or three similar uh, incidents at his house over the previous couple of months. And this was like one o'clock in the morning. Dude was over it. He was tired of it. He sees something going on with the camera. He goes outside with a gun to confront whoever's going into his car. And I hope this is still at the right spot. It's it's not. So let me uh, try to find it here. Okay, so the guy, you can see him moving around here. Mm-hmm. I and then the homeowner is going to come out. Yeah, he's going to do a little talking. <clears throat> and then, uh, so there he is running down that way. And they're both going to exchange two shots. Well, one each at each other. Homeowner wasn't shot. Uh if the suspect was shot or not they didn't i don't think they found any blood or anything so they don't think that he was shot but there, there's just so much stuff with this like this guy he, just just after shooting he goes around this other station wagon here what if there's another dude still in the truck yeah something like that and 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 again what are you doing you're you're defending a, a vehicle discuss <laughs> I mean, we cover a bunch of stories, and there was one recently where a guy went out, and there was like four people, right, outside of the guy mm-hmm. in the car. Like you don't know, I and mean, you're going to protect somebody stealing change out of your car or stealing the car itself. Like, take the car, right, Whatever. right. And, and and Sal, to your point with the with the first story, um, with the uh, the car salesman there, um, if there were kids in the car his wife, girlfriend, whatever, something like that. Now you're in a completely different situation, but one o'clock in the morning, truck's just sitting there. Someone's going through it. Mm -hmm. No way I'm going out there to confront them. 
Yeah, absolutely. And uh, again, when we see this play out, I, I think there's two elements involved with this. The The first one is, again, is a general breakdown of, well, not a breakdown, but a, a, a complete failure out of the gate of most people carrying concealed to understand legality and realize what they're setting up for themselves as far as a legal battle should things go south when you're protecting yeah. property. The other thing is obviously tactics. You know, the average Joe six pack carrying a gun. <laughs> I mean, you know, he doesn't, he, he's not trained. He doesn't take, you know, any kind of tactical training. So there's this mentality that Joe six pack is armed and he's invincible. And we see over and over again people yep. willing to put themselves into very dangerous situations. You know, it's partly skewed, I'm sure, by Hollywood because the good guy always wins. But also, you know, there are so many stories of the uh, the vast majority of stories. The armed citizen prevails, and that's because he has the element of surprise. The criminal doesn't expect it. But that does not mean that you're bulletproof and you can put yourself in a situation like this. To your point, you know, who else is in the truck? Who else is around in the darkness? You know, so when you interject yourself into something like this, you are opening yourself up to, you know what, nine times out of ten, you might get lucky and you have the average guy, you know, cricket, the neighborhood crackhead, who you're mm -hmm. going to shoot at him and he's going to run off into the dark or whatever. Cricket, but you may not. <laughs> yeah, cricket, the neighborhood crackhead. You never heard of him. So, um, you know, but you might that that might not be who you get. You see more and more, you know, criminals will post up and they will shoot it out. And there might be more than one, obviously. So you just have to always weigh what's in the balance. Is it worth is it worth it? You know, somebody's ripping your car off from your own driveway. Are you going to go out and confront that? I can yeah. tell you that if I have nobody in the car, no family in the car, I'm not going outside. Call the cops. Granted, they'll probably get there long after it's gone. But is it worth it? And for me, it's very, very clearly not worth it. Yeah. A couple exactly. of years ago, um, when we were first down in Florida, before before we had the uh, cameras outside, it's the reason I, I got them. <clears throat> Somebody had broken into the, the Jeep. It was just sitting in the driveway. And we were in a really quiet neighborhood. And, like, nothing goes around. It's probably some kids or something like that. They just, you know, they got, like, maybe 50 cents and change. And <laughs> that was it. I don't keep anything in there. Um, and, but if I had been alerted, you know, with the, the <clears throat> motion activation or whatever, and the sends a notification to the phone that that was going on. And I saw it in real time. Like you said, I'm not, I'm not going out there. I'm calling the police. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, you know, we can bring it right back to Dan's point. He made a, a few minutes ago about the guy in Austin now being charged. You know, if you live in a blue city, um, realistically, I, I hate to say it, but it's that simple. It's a, a, do you live in a red area or a blue area? If you live in a blue area, your best bet is staying in the house because it's very hard for even a very politically motivated prosecutor to come after you for defending your home when people kick down your door. But even if you walk out into your parking lot or out into the street to get into a shootout over a vehicle, you're really opening yourself up for a lot of potential issues, even, even if nobody <laughs> dies during the situation, right? Yeah. Oh, right. Sorry, Basically, what that guy. I mean, this guy's had his car robbed what two or three times before this. So I'm sure he's pissed off. And yeah, but yeah. still, it, no. Right. Um, I'm sure he was. And somebody mentioned about locking his doors. I'm sure his doors were locked. The guy probably had a slim gym. Right. He could get into a car in about two seconds. Mm -hmm. No, it's understandable yeah. being furious about it. But again, you have to weigh what are you setting <laughs> yourself up for. Right. Yeah. So that was just a quick one. Um, and yeah, every time those comments, sorry, sorry, mm -hmm. Dan, <laughs> the comments go right over Dan. We just let, we yeah. roll over and let the bad guys do what they want. That's or, okay. I've like, got a radio face anyway. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, take my car. I'll get a new one. I, I'll, I'd rather have a new car. Go. Somebody yeah. wants to steal my car right now. Go right ahead. I'm tired of it. I just got it back from the shop. So whatever. Um. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and again, um, it depends on where you live and to be quite frank, Yeah. 
if you live in a place where your car gets ripped off three times in a row, I guarantee you, you're living in a blue district. Sorry if that hurts anybody's feelings, but we all know it's true, right? So maybe the option is to get out from those kind of areas. You know, if your car this keeps is my friend stolen. commenting, and he's exactly right. My truck's not worth two k and two hundred k yeah. in legal fees. Exactly. Yeah. No, and again, you have not. to consider what are the legal ramifications. Uh, you're going to have a prosecutor <clears> who's <throat> going to go after you. If you're living in an area where your car gets ripped off three times in a row, again, you're mm -hmm. most likely living in the kind of area where the prosecutor very clearly is going to let criminals walk very easily, but he's going to come down on you, the armed citizen. And that's just the sad state of affairs. So That's absolutely true. So... A good idea is have insurance, something like U.S. Law Shield or something like that to back mm -hmm. you up. But still, it's not worth it. Even if you have something like that, the time, the hassle, the the, yeah. uh, the legal threat, the potential for jail time, it's the financial yeah. threat. It's just not, it's just not yeah. justified. Yeah, this is a great comment here. I'd rather have less stuff than be in prison away from my family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and absolutely. Like, it's as, it's as simple as that, and and that's that's that could be even a a a better case scenario, you know. Right, that, that's that, 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 that's the, the guy that went out there. He, he could have been shot. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it's understandable, you know. But again, we've talked about the ramifications for you. You could get killed or crippled doing it, or you could wind up in prison. But even beyond that, I'll go a step further. And this is the one that'll really get a bunch of people mad calling me a liberal and whatever. That's fine. Do you want to kill somebody liberal for stealing? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> a flaming leftist. No, do you Not want really. to? Yeah. Do you want to kill somebody who might be a teenage kid or whoever out there because he's stealing your car? Do you want to kill him over the car, even if you walk away from it, which you may? Right. Okay, cons consider yeah. that. Consider and let's that. say you walk away, and then his family sues you, um, yeah. sues you for it, because there's always the civil aspect for it. Or yeah. he's got friends, and they start to threaten you, threaten your family. Uh, right. We just ran a story over the weekend, actually, we ran an old one of a cop who was involved in a shooting in his own home. There was a home invader, and he shot a guy and killed him. And that guy's family, his friends tried to hire somebody to kill him. And and, and this the guy's family harassed him for years. He had to move. Mm -hmm. wow. And it was a totally justified shooting. You don't want to get involved in that if there's any way to avoid it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And I'll, I'll ask again, though, even if none of that happens and you walk away from it scot-free, is it worth killing somebody over taking a car? Right. I don't think it is. I'm sorry. I don't think it is. Okay. Yeah. So just, you know, it, you carry the gun to defend innocent life, whether that's yourself or your family or other innocent people in the environment. You carry it to protect life, not to protect your wheels. Agreed. So, look, we can't have Sal anymore. He's too much of a. No, that's it. That's... <laughs> I'm no, fine with it. We, we, we all are in complete agreement. <laughs> um, I did, I did, a back to what you were talking about with the, um, uh, you know, being involved in something like that and then having their friends or, you know, family, gang members, whatever, um, retaliate against you. Um, I've, I've always, since the beginning of, uh, caring and like, you know, looking, having, having guns for self-defense, I've always had a duplicate of my favorite carry gun because, for, for for that reason specifically, like if you, you know, somebody breaks into your house and you shoot them, you know, kill, kill them or not, the police are more likely if you kill them, but police are going to take your gun and who knows when you're going to get it back. So, but people were busting on me because I'm like, I have a backup gun <laughs> because, you know, what if, what if he was a, uh, you know, like, like, like a gang member, whatever. Now everybody knows where you live. And it's I've done a number of stories over the years on retaliation like that. Um, and, and, and a couple of them there, they had one gun, that's it. And now the police had it in an evidence locker and they had no way to defend themselves. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, two is one and one is none, you know, for a multiple multitude of reasons. You know, and that that's that's one of them. But yeah, exact reason, exact right. duplicate of your carry gun, you know, and preferably maybe a, a long gun that you keep in the house as well. So Yeah. Hmm. All right. So we are thirty five minutes in. We've done three. I think we can get through what do we have? One, two. Oh, we have four more. We gotta hurry up. If you stop talking. All right, we're moving over to uh, tag. Dan, this one's yours. Um, do you want to do you want to start from the get go with this? Yeah, this is a, some very good news today out of the Fourth Circuit um, Court of Appeals, which covers uh, both Virginia's, both Carolinas, uh, and Maryland, um, and they ruled that it is unconstitutional. Um, the federal ban on selling handguns to adults under 21 is unconstitutional. In other words, if you're 18, 19, or 20 years old, you can buy a firearm. Now, this is great news. If you read um, the post we put up, uh, there's some uh, choice language in there in the opinion. Uh, Second Amendment right to keep bear arms is no different um, than uh, other civil rights. And um, the judge said he was not going to treat uh, the right to keep and bear arms is a second class uh, right, and he were, wasn't going to, to uh, treat, here we go, refuse to uh, relegate either Second Amendment or 18 to 20 year olds uh, to second class status. You love to see that. This is exactly, yeah. um, I mean, that, that's, that's just the essence of what uh, most of us believe. Now, this was the ruling of a three judge panel. This was a ruling, uh, the two who, uh, it was a two to one decision. Um, the two voting for was a, a Trump and a George W. Bush appointee going against it was a Clinton appointee. And uh, as, just sure as the sun rises in the east, the Department of Justice is going to appeal this ruling and ask for a uh, rehearing by the full fourth uh, circuit court, an unbank uh, ruling. And there's probably a 90 percent chance they're going to overturn this. So. Um, we shall see. Now, when they do that, the, the, uh, that will probably be then appealed to the Supreme Court. And then we'll see maybe one day if uh, they take a, co- a case like this. Right. Uh, a lot of that may hinge on how the current court, ca- court case that is before them, the uh, New York uh, concealed carry case goes. Um, mm-hmm. We shall see. So anyway, good news now. It's nothing's going to change in, 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 in the immediate future. Um, but uh it was encouraging. A little good news on a Tuesday. Right. Yep, real good. Real good. We, we've been getting a lot of good news from the courts lately, and it's kind yep. of sad that that's how the battle has to go. But, you know, in so many districts that it's just become hopeless <laughs> voting, uh, you know, the, uh, the socialist out that it's become the recourse, you know. Um, what, what's interesting with this debate, though, is we, we come back to – you know, the hypocrisy is just amazing. The same people who say, oh, you know, 18 years old is too young to buy a handgun or any firearm are fine with letting 16 year olds vote. Right. Or exactly. they want to make it 14 or whatever. You know, so m- the way I look at it is let's decide what is officially an adult. Now, if we want to say 21 is officially an adult. That means you can't vote until 21. You can't uh, join the military till 21, etc. OK, then you know what? Then I'm fine with with this 21 year old thing but why is 18 the official age of adulthood for everything else except the second amendment outrageous right. you know so this this should be a no-brainer kind of like that comment so they're not ready to carry a gun but they can go die for our country and all that exactly stuff. so right. what i don't get that or face or face any charges as an adult in court mm-hmm. there's, there's just right. an inherent contradiction to that Right. No, I mean, again, if everybody agrees, hey, an 18 year old is not old enough, then again, that means, okay, no voting till 21, mm-hmm. no joining the military to 21, no, no drink. Well, I guess still drink. They can't drinking drink. would be the other argument. As far as I'm concerned, if 18 right. is legal age that you're an adult, you should be able to drink, buy mm-hmm. firearms, whatever. So let's just decide what the age is. I would agree. The, the difference, of course, is there's no right to drink. There is right. a right to keep bear arms. Second Amendment is a civil right. Right. Hmm. 
Yeah. Well, so that's good news. We'll, we'll have to see how it plays out. Dan, you said 90% chance likely of it being. I would expect so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, there's just before we move, like this, the constitutional carry in Louisiana, it did get vetoed. Oh, veto override. I think they're like trying to make that happen. I, I don't, what are my feelings about it? I don't think it's going to happen. If it does, fantastic. It, cool. The bill passed by veto proof majorities in both houses. The question is, will they come back in the summer for a veto session? That's right. something that has never happened in Louisiana before. Right. Mm, okay. So we'll see, I guess. I know a bunch of sheriffs came out and I think they don't, they don't want it. Correct. They, this happens in literally every state. It happened here in Texas a couple mm -hmm. months ago. They drag out police chiefs and a few few sheriffs. You say, yeah. you know, gosh, this, this is going to be dangerous for my people. And we're going to have, you know, cops are going to have to start um, treating every everybody they encounter like they're armed as if they don't anyway. Right. Cop, right. Well, you know, do. this is a country with over 400 million guns. What cop mm -hmm. who's worth his salt doesn't expect that anybody he encounters on the street is probably armed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. But well, what about the bloodbath in the other constitutional oh, carry states? That's what I keep always bring uh, yeah. up. I don't. I see mean, it. they're just swimming in blood. Oh wait, yeah, yeah. yeah it never happened. Exactly. Yeah. Right. You talking about Chicago? <laughs> oh, well. No. Does <laughs> Chicago? Have, wait. Does Does Baltimore and Chicago have constitutional carry? Maybe we shouldn't have it. It's funny, like so when uh -huh. that came up with constitutional carry in Louisiana, people hit me up about it, like family or whatever. So they don't know what constitutional carry is. That it was passed in like almost half. I don't know half the other state, like a bunch of other states. Um, yeah. So they just hear it here and they're like, oh, everybody's going to be carrying a gun. Well, have you looked into like all the other states that have passed it and there isn't a Wild West going on and all this? Like, I get right. the knee jerk reaction like, oh, they're going to give people like should just carry guns. OK, right. well, people can buy guns, but they can only own them and carry them at home. How many, Why? Bad, how many bad news stories do we do out of Vermont? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like <laughs> I, I, can't tell you the last time, <laughs> but but yeah, like so what? I can buy a gun legally, but I just can't carry it outside. Why? So if you want to go on a rampage, you're going to say, "Man, you know, I feel like killing all of my coworkers today." I'm just but I can't here. because I can't here. legally carry my gun out of the house. I have the Christmas yeah. party here. Guess I'm screwed. Yeah, exactly. Right. right. So, <laughs> I don't know. We'll see if it happens here. We'll see. Yeah. All, All right. right, you want to move on to the next Three, story? Yeah, this, yeah, this next one is super weird. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Really sad story. But, um, so just looking at this image here, yes, that's a golf course, and yes, that's a pickup truck that's kind of teetering on a, uh, you know, one of the little hills there, whatever those are called. I'm not sand trap. Guy. Above the sand trap, yeah. So this vehicle here had two deceased people in the bed of the truck gagged and, and bound a, gagged and bound mm -hmm. and there was a third person who was uh, a pro golfer uh and he was uh luke correct me correct me if i'm wrong he was a he was working in, in some capacity i didn't read course. that he was on the he it didn't sound like he was he playing was he was on the course he went to investigate what the hell was going on apparently because a truck was about to go in a sand trap, and then he got shot, I believe, in the head and killed by the, right. the suspect. Um, it sounded like reading the story, the follow-up story to what you covered, it sounded like it might have been some kind of drug thing with the suspect and the, the two guys that were in a truck, and then the golfer just walked up on a crime in progress type thing and got killed. Right, right. And the only thing I can't figure out and have uh, read in any of the news stories is how, <clears throat> excuse me, how the suspect and the truck ended up. I couldn't find that out either. Um, on the golf course. Yeah. But something that popped out of me when I, when you posted this story to talk about tonight, I think it was within literally the last two weeks, maybe before this. Mm -hmm. I think it might have been your Facebook group. Somebody was posting about how do, how do you carry it on a golf course? 
So I was reading through the comments and people were giving him shit about wanting to carry on a golf course. Like, before this before this happened? I think it was before this happened. So I'm like, oh. here, perfect example why. Like, right. like, yeah, why why are you gonna give somebody shit for wanting to carry everywhere? You never know when if we know when shit's gonna go bad, then we don't right. need to carry. That concept still still eludes a lot of people with the uh, you know, if I'm going to if I'm going down the street to a little, you know, grocery store that's all nice and awesome and nothing ever happens there. Oh, I'm not going to bring my gun. But if I go into the city or whatever, yeah, I'm going to bring it with me. Um, you know, when like who who thinks that they're going to get shot dead? Well, nothing ever happens to what happens in good neighborhoods, bad like. It's always how it happens. The good neighborhood fallacy yeah. is mind blowing. Okay, you, that you that, that yeah, the, the good neighborhood thing, right? I I I think of arming myself, but I live in a good neighborhood. You know what equates a good neighborhood in people's minds? It's the same thing with a golf course, right? Because usually it's a bunch of uppity up preppies out golfing, right? It's I'm like, not an uh, uppity up preppy, but I play golf. Well, oh, uh, see, Luke. Okay, now who's who's the uh, liberal now? Okay, Luke out playing <laughs> golf. See, that is so no but right it's that kind of environment right at the clubhouse all that oh nothing bad is going to happen here so unless your good neighborhood means right. you have a moat around it with alligators and a personal armed guard of samurai you don't live in a safe neighborhood yeah. okay mm -hmm. anything that other human beings can approach how is it safe in your mind so this argument of i only carry a gun when i feel like i need it uh, the way yeah. i look at that is why are you going where you're why going, you going if that's anyway? the place right. you feel you need a gun right 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 and so i like there was an article or a video i posted a while back it was like stop being lazy carry always carry a gun and to this day i still get comments because in the video i talk about that i would carry a gun when i was cutting the grass I have no like I can carry a gun, cut in the grass, and be comfortable and do it. And people are like, "Oh, well, you need to move in a different neighborhood," or "That's what's wrong with the U.S. You got to carry a gun when you're cutting your lawn." You're just paranoid. No, I'm just protecting <laughs> myself because you never know when shit's going to happen. Like, and how many of those exact stories we could cover? We pull up? Yeah, we cover the, there was, people being accosted right in their own yard. The thing that yeah. pops in my head it was the guy, the old guy with a holster. He had some—I don't know what holster he had—but he was like water in his lawn. He got robbed, pulled yeah. his gun. The holster came out with his gun, so there was a bunch of problems there. But yeah. you never know when shit's going to go down. Like I've done a number of stories on people mowing their lawn and having stuff like that happen. <laughs> Yeah, because they think you're distracted, or I mean, who knows? Why? Why, why is that? And why? Why, is that, why am I paranoid if I carry a gun, cut my grass, versus going to the gas station? Mm -hmm. right. Well, well here, here's here's anywhere. here's the thing, right? Uh, that we can come back to. If you're a person who carries, let's say, let's come up with a number to make it easy. Fifty percent of the time, you carry fifty percent of the time. We all know Murphy's law. When will you actually need the gun? During the fifty percent of the time that you're carrying it, or during the fifty percent of the time that you're not, we all know how that's going to play out, right? So it's a lifestyle thing. Either you carry or you don't. If you carry, then you're carrying all the time, legally permissible. Okay, unless you have to enter gun-free zones or whatever. All right, but otherwise, you're carrying. It's it. Uh, and one thing I come back to is I I don't like the mindset that comes out of carrying only half the time. Right, Because then you have a mindset of what are your capabilities for any given situation, and you either have that capability or not. So, you know, carry all the time or don't carry. You're better off with one or the other. Yeah. Yep. Um, all right. 11 minutes. Uh, Luke, do you want to? <laughs> uh, that's nine, not 11. What's that? No, no, There's no. There's nine minutes left. Well, look at the actual time in the top left. Yeah. Anyway, um. we, we start late because you always have to. Because you had to cook dinner five before. minutes before we started. The show, as usual. Um, all right. So, what are we going to go to next? Uh, well, the, these last two are. are all short. right. That's a good one. So that happened in like Kenner, Louisiana, which is like a little offshoot of New Orleans. So it's kind of in my hood. Um, so I guess. This guy was like assaulting a woman at the gas station. Another innocent bystander. Yeah, that guy there. Innocent bystander saw it, 
decided to break up the fight. And I guess that's what happened right here. The guy in the red went back to his car, got a gun. And then I think that white car behind him, because the video kind of sucks, but I think that white car behind him is the guy in the blue shirt. And he winds up getting shot. And uh, I think he tried to drive himself to the hospital, pulled over, called the ambulances. Um, so he interjected himself and wound up getting shot. So he, he, he survived. I believe so. I believe so. So yeah, like, all right, you see somebody getting assaulted. You're going to break that up and put your life at risk or like, so, I mean, I guess, you know, what would y'all do? Those are tricky. Um, it, it, it's so many factors depends on what's going on. And even if you had going. a gun, are you doing that? Like, are you interjecting yourself? Cause then like the article you wrote the other day, Sal, if I go and interject myself into that, I'm bringing a gun into that situation as well. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So, and how many times have we written about this topic? You know, the, the one thing, that I come back to is always, and I've, I've said this in many of these articles that chivalry is dead. And what I mean by that is in the 1950s or whatever, the idea of some guy smacking around a female in public was ludicrous because every guy in the vicinity would beat the brains out of that guy. Okay. That's mm -hmm. just how society was. Okay. But chivalry is dead because I can tell you what is more likely to happen now is you interject in some, in a, a male smacking a female or whatever, and prepare to get sued by the damsel in distress yeah. for hurting her boyfriend. Okay. And I, you know, and, and we hate to be cynical like that, but that is the nature of the world. So again, and, did you see it from the beginning? Do you know what's truly happening? Right. If so, you know, the, the one exception would be a child because there are no circumstances under which, you know, uh, it's justifiably be, and, and I'm not talking about a parent smacking their kid. I, I'm talking about, you know, somebody actually brutalizing a child. That is totally different. But man, if you want to get between a man and a woman, when there's something domestic going on, you are really opening yourself up to a bunch of trouble. For sure. Let's see. I'm trying to <laughs> comments here too it appears this was not a domestic thing but my point no, is you don't you don't no. know what you're seeing though right right and i mean i don't know it no, kind of like wrong. i guess it, it no, makes me like, think of you know yeah. what's your what's your mission why are you carrying like what do you you want to go home to your family right so am i protecting some random person at well, the gas station right and you and you need to know that stuff before you go out right you know and and of course every situation is different and you know but Sal that's a very good point if you're if you're not understanding what what was going on from the beginning um, it, it can get really dicey. but even if you see it from the beginning are you gonna right. save somebody else's life or try to save somebody right. else's life and inject yourself in that situation right exactly and maybe you know, get shot and not go home to your family so um, for for example if we talk about seeing it from the beginning it does change things for example you're in uh, the gas station. A guy comes in and robs it, and there's a female clerk behind the counter, and he sticks a gun in her face, and she runs out the door. He runs after her, grabs her, and starts beating her to death in a parking lot. It's pretty clear what we're seeing at that point, right? right. But you just pull up to a, into a parking lot, and there's a guy and a woman going at it. You have no I, idea. You have no idea what you're saying. Yeah, she right. could have been instigating all Yeah. You have no or idea. most likely right. it's a domestic thing. Right. Um, Todd did a comment here. I don't know what he's talking about, but I'd like to see it. He said, did you see the video of the guy at the gas station that stood and watched while the quote unquote boyfriend carried away the girl crying? I the don't know what he's talking about now. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I'm going to look for it after this. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, but that would that would be interesting to to see how that played out in the story, the story behind it. And again, what, what's the circumstance? Is it a young girl? You know, and did you see it from the beginning? You know, you see somebody carrying somebody away. That's now an abduction. That, again, is a little bit different than, than a couple of people, it looks like, that are smacking each other around 
in a parking lot, right? So it's just, yeah. it, it's a hard call. But yeah. my point is to err on caution because if you really don't know what's happening, for example, there was a case where uh, a couple of guys grabbed a woman and dragged her down <laughs> to the pavement in a parking lot, and it was two undercover police officers, and a guy mm -hmm. came and pulled his gun on them, and you think that's going to go away? It's not. Yeah. You know, yeah, so right. you you need to know what you're seeing. Yeah. Yeah. And who would think it's something like that? You just don't know. There are there are a million different possibilities. All right, so <clears throat> let's move on to the uh, the last one here. One more. Oh yeah, Luke, this is one of yours. We can get through this real quick, Actually, right? Yeah, I mean, do you want to do that one, or you want to do the uh, the peep and Tom one where they chase people down? We could uh, we could do that one. That's fine. Um, uh, okay. Yeah, we'll 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 do that other one later. I, I mean, this uh, one's. So, guy, I think, I don't know, scroll down a little bit. I feel like it was like 2, 3 o'clock in the morning in Chicago. All right, yeah, 2, 4 in the morning. Guy gets hit in his car. He, The guy that hit him drives off. He follows him, maybe to get his license plate or whatever. Uh, and then the guy that hit him stopped his car, got out and started shooting at him. And he had a concealed carry license. He shot back. The concealed carrier that got his car hit was like grazed by a bullet. Um, the other guy got away. So that's the story. Like, all right. 2.40 a.m. in the morning. Some guy hits your car and flees. He probably obviously doesn't want to get caught by the cops. Um, I guess I understand like falling to get a license plate and, and stuff. But no, wait a, wait a second. Do you <laughs> expect me to believe... That 2.40 a.m. in Chicago, there's crime? Come on, guys. What, what are you wasting my time with this? There was like <laughs> five other stories covered at about the same time. So, no. I'm good. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, what is, the, what is the saying? Nothing happens. What is the time? Nothing good happens after. Is it 2 a.m.? Right. Yeah. So, I mean, night or whatever. Like I guess it's a road thing. Right. Going, this, is, this is still, you know, going out. I would rather I would rather invest in a in a nice quality uh, dash cam that is able to capture a license plate versus right been following them following yeah. a vehicle that just hit me because again like you don't know who that person is what what they're capable of um, you know they could hit you because they were fleeing the scene from a house mm -hmm. that they just robbed or something like that you don't know right. They are, they're obviously fleeing. They're not going to be like, get out the car and like, here's my insurance. So they obviously want to get away. <laughs> Oops, I didn't know I hit you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and remember that when you chase somebody down, whether it's on foot, it's not much different if you're doing it in the vehicle. It, you are no longer dealing with an immediate threat. You are now basically engaging. It's not quite mutual combat, but it's similar because you are now technically an aggressor okay you're you're now even if there's an altercation to begin with like let's say at the wreck and then the guy who hit you jumps in his car and flees when you chase him down you are now opening that conflict back up so right. if something bad happens you're opening yourself up now to right. you, you know you can lose that argument of self-defense because why right. did you have to chase after that individual it's a right. very hazardous thing to do right, right. And I'm not saying specifically for this story. I don't. I don't know this guy or you know anything. But um, I'm under the impression that some people make the decision um, to you know like, like in in this case, he decides. Okay, I'm going to follow that car uh, to get a license plate and figure some other stuff out. And I think that some people do that. They make that decision because they're like, well, you know, if things go down, I have a gun. You know, and kind of use that as right. And then things go down and zoom in on like that windshield. There's quite a few shots in that windshield. Oh, I, if, oh, I if see you it. can oh, see we, it. We, there you go. There you go. Like it looks like one, two, three, four, five, maybe shots. I would I'm assume. Is that what I'm looking at right there? Uh, it looks, looks like, like it. And right? for him I mean, only get that's a lot. Of, that's a lot of shots for chasing some car to get their license plate. If that's what was going on. Yeah. So, all right. Well, it looks like we're going to do it. We got 20 seconds left. <laughs> um, we try to keep these under an hour. So, um, 
Sal Dan, thank you again for gracing us with your presence. <laughs> Thanks Always for being pleasure. on. And we're going to be back, uh, let's see, two weeks. This is July 27th. Right? We're doing Tuesday still. Luke, yep. Huh? Yep. We're back on schedule. So awesome. All right. So we'll be back July 27th, 10 p.m. Eastern. Uh, did we do a giveaway this time? We did not. Um, we'll, we'll do one next time. Yeah. We'll get we'll get everything straight next time. And Bob will have some swag, maybe, if I can get off. Uh, uh, Luke get told me All not right. to say anything. All so right. I and won't. broadcast and broadcast. <laughs> but the swag has still not shown up okay i'm just saying i'm waiting on brandon so he's got everything yeah, i know I, i'm not waiting on brandon he's got all the stuff <laughs> <laughs> it's just me so we'll see if i can get it done oh man all right, all right. anything else no i think that's it thank you everybody and us and we'll, we'll see you in two weeks see y'all in two weeks